Welcome back, everyone, to Super Friends episode 63. I'm your host this week, Nick, and I am joined by CJ. Oh, shit, what's good? <laughs> Luke. Hey, guys. And Tim. How's it going, everyone? And, uh, yeah, as you can see, we, well, you can't see us, actually, so, yep. That's, oh, uh, sorry, guys. Dead, it is, dead it is a period of civil war. Tim yep. wants to kill CJ for obstructing the recording of Super Friends. Yeah. We'll get we'll get the video back eventually. <laughs> we just want to get like all of our camera quality more synced up. Yeah, I mean, it's just a shame when some of us are kind of moving through the speed force, and then we have Mikey who's like at sixty frames, ten eighty p. That's true. The rest of us are reporting live from Baghdad, and uh, everybody else is you know crystal clear. But I, it's one of those things. Like, let us know in the comment section down below, like what you thought of seeing us on camera. Is that something you want to see more of? I think. Honestly, like, scrolling through the comments on Super Friends and Marvelite, both of them seem to be really positive. Um, shout out to the dude that just ass-blasted Marvel Luke for vaping. Uh, yeah, he was got positive. two people in a row who did that. It was fantastic. <laughs> well, I mean, so the thing that I love most about that is not just that he got ass-blasted. I used that. to think Luke was cool until I saw him vaping. Exactly. <laughs> until the moment I saw him vape. Dude, he was so upset about that. He really was. Uh, and then I that mean, the person directly underneath too, them he... didn't know it was Luke who was doing I mean, it, but just said that the I person mean, I... who's vaping looks so unlikable. <laughs> I get why I get why Luke was hurt about that, and I Luke knows if he's listening to this. I love you, buddy. Um, you're. I was gonna say you're my favorite, but I'm here with a lot of other people that might be upset about that. But no. Yeah, with the uh, other it's Luke. One of the... <laughs> the other Luke. You're in our top two Lukes. You're yeah, you're in our, you're Luke somewhere you're the worst Luke somewhere in our top two, buddy. Um, but no, it's, it's let us know in the comment section down below what you thought of that. If you'd like to see it more, and if you guys do want to see it, I mean, I saw more positive reactions than negative. If you guys do want to see it, we will definitely invest into making that happen, making it a reality. <laughs> um, you know, even though it's a little more time, a little more effort, um, that's something that we definitely would make happen. If you guys are interested in seeing us, as opposed to just hearing us, seeing me yeah. drink my way through this podcast every week, well, rather they couldn't than just see me hearing though. me, they couldn't. I mean. Somebody had to be the cameraman. Yep. Um, someone did. Po someone did them. posit 100k. Nick shows up on camera. What's funny is so. What's funny? I mean, he was in the fail whale vlogs. You can go watch those. But what's funny is uh, yeah. what's funny is those fail whale vlogs. Please go watch that. What's funny is I just looked at Nick's uh, Skype icon and I realized Johnny Sins would make a great Lex Luthor. Yeah, he's built for gonna, it. He's built I for you were it. Say Johnny Sins would make a great guest on Super Friends. He would too. I think if he knew yeah. how often that Nick has had that as a Skype icon, like it would be like a perfect. Like he would be if so he flattered. Only knew all the traffic we directed to him, <laughs> which is like probably three people. But yeah, go check I'd, out Johnny Sins Muscle Fitness on YouTube. It's actually really great. I'm totally not doing that, but it's New Year's, so I probably should. <laughs> yeah. Have people gotten over us bantering yet? Are like, are people cool with that now? It's no. only been three minutes anyway. So. Dude, what are we drinking tonight? Um, I've got the People's Beer of Ri uh, People's Beer of Richmond, Pabst Blue Ribbon. Um, <laughs> what? I'm bougie as hell. Damn. I'm drinking uh, Nature's Nectar uh, water. Oh boy. Tim Out Tebow of my over here. New Yeti cup. Uh, I have a Pepsi. Luke, everybody knows cider. Yeti is a microphone. Yeah. Everybody knows <laughs> that Yeti true. is a microphone, sir. CJ, you didn't know. You can use it also as a water bottle. If you believe. Shout out. If you believe hard, enough. You, believe hard enough, you can shouts use anything out, as a water bottle. Shouts out to Marvel Luke's worst moment. Shout out to Jeff Loeb. Shout out to me holding him down in that seat in that theater in New York. <laughs> So he could not <laughs> leave. Couldn't get a video of that. I wish. I wish Michael had been recording. I wish that we would not have been thrown out of that Hammerstein ballroom <laughs> for Michael yeah. having his camera out. Um, but no, uh, it, it's a damn. It's a damn shame. In the words of Nick, it's a crying shame. Is what it is. Mm. We don't have any news today, huh? We really don't. I mean, we're just going to keep Barely. talking like this for an hour. We are going to talk about our, our what we're looking forward to in 2017, as somebody suggested. We do have a couple of news topics. Yeah. But yeah. first, do you have anything that you want to promote, <laughs> CJ? I, um, I believe it would be a good idea, thanks to contractual obligations, to remind you all 
the loot crate is fantastic and I love loot crate and they're actually it sounds sarcastic but I do love loot crate Tim you've had loot crate um, for yep. one month I need to get you those extra two months at some point buddy uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll do it at some point we'll figure it out what's funny is so when we realized we over sent you those boxes like I think like because I didn't cancel the subscription in time so I got like an additional month or something like that um I don't know what happened to those other two boxes. So those are sitting somewhere in New York. Um, yeah, I don't even know if they're in New York. I think they're in Washington, D.C. <laughs> that's true. They might also be in Washington. Um, <laughs> so if they're in Washington, I could go find them. Uh, but no. Uh, it's, great. it's a great <laughs> Search subscription. all of Washington. I will. I will. Head, from two head years ago now. From two years ago. Uh, but we were, I mean, we were talking about the Speed Force. Uh, but Loot Crate is this great subscription service. They send you this cool box of goodies every single month. Um, this this month's theme was it was Origins, and it was going to include things from uh, you know Donkey Kong, interestingly enough, from Nintendo. It seemed like they were teasing some Captain America stuff from Marvel. Uh, they had some interesting DC stuff planned, as well as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So it's going to be a very interesting box. This is one of the more interesting boxes, in my opinion, just because I don't really know what they're going to do. Like, Revolution last month, it seemed pretty straightforward. It was going to involve Assassin's Creed. It was going to involve Firefly. Some pretty straightforward stuff. This, I'm actually really curious about. And you've missed the Christmas thing, but if you've got a belated gift to buy anybody at this point in January, I think you should think about getting them something. Uh, and you can take 10% off any Loot Crate subscription just by using our exclusive link, trylootcrate.com slash hybrid network. Again, that's trylootcrate.com slash hybrid network. And once you're there, use the promo code BRIDGE10. Get those savings. Just buy a belated Christmas gift for somebody. Or for yourself. Treat yourself if you have any money left after this festive holiday season. Um, it's really worth it. I, 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 if, you're, if you're a nerd, you, ha- you get a little cash to spend. Uh, I would highly recommend it. Yeah. I don't have any money now. Steam sale. That's true. That's true. I missed... I, I fortunately... because uh, So I was traveling for a lot of, the, of December. My laptop does not have Steam on it surprisingly a lot of you would be surprised to know and i need to get it because my laptop oh, is actually shucks. stronger than my desktop oh shucks uh i actually did not even i looked at the steam sale once um mm. and that day they didn't have anything that interested me and so i was like i i, I lucked out because every time they do a sale i end up buying like at least like 30 dollars of shit that i'll never play yeah i got battlefront 2 and republic commando so Oh, I got a uh, Star Wars Humble Bundle, like, a few months back that has actually been, like, sustaining me. Or it was a few years back, but I got, like, uh, Republic Commando, uh, Battlefront 2, both <clears throat> Knights of the Old Republics, um, all of the Kyle Katarn games, R.I.P., in peace. Um, so I've been living uh, for the past couple of years mm. off of that, but, yeah. Anyways, DC Comics, guys, fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. the, the excitement yeah, that was is a, yeah, that was a teaser for the upcoming Star Wars podcast, and it'd be called uh, Jedi Council or something. Jedi Council. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's taken already. I'm not sure, but anyways. Yeah, sure. uh, Who cares? <clears throat> anyways, we do have a couple uh, news topics that we're going to sort of talk about <clears throat> the year in preview, and then there you obviously go. answer your questions like always, um, but. So the first topic is something that we have actually spoken about here on the channel and, of course, the podcast. Uh, ben Affleck's Batman movie, he's casting some new doubt on it and whether or not it'll actually happen or not. Um, you know, it's uh, it seems like every other day he's like, yep, yeah, it's going to happen. Nope. We're shooting. Nope. Uh, there's no script. Uh, I don't know. And then, I don't know. What, I don't know Has what's happening. Has he ever said yeah. that they're shooting, or is that just other people? Well, Joe Manganiello that? said that they were going to be shooting in April. That's what they were aiming for. Um, at least that was the late, that was an interview from like November or December uh, in which he said that. I think they said that they were doing something Smurfs related in like March, <laughs> and then April they were gonna. I just find it weird. Oh, yeah, like that everyone smurf. else. Well, because like everyone else seems to say, like, yeah, it's gonna be happening. We're moving ahead, and every time they ask Ben Affleck, he's just like, yeah, nope. I don't know, man. There's no script. I'm not ready for this yet. Uh, whatever. Well, what's so funny like, to everyone else comes out and they're like, yeah, it's happening. Coming in April. Uh, yeah. What's so funny to me is, yeah. What's so funny to me is that he's like he's talked about, you know, 
like wanting to get it right. He's talked about like wanting to do right by the character, wanting to make the definitive movie, and I 100% like understand that. I 100% stand by it. But it's like every time they ask him, it, it just seems like he's the one like casting down on it. And what's really funny to me is this Guardian article talked at length about how candid he is, how kind of refreshing that is as an interview, that he's a very candid celebrity, he's very honest. And that kind of like leads you to believe, like in my opinion, that what he's saying is true. Um, and like 100% like he's being straight up with you but uh, he basically just said you know if it's not coming along in a way that I I, I feel is good he's not going to do it and I don't know if that means he's just not going to direct it or what but the craziest thing to me about that is dude you're writing the script you're writing it with Jeff Johns if it doesn't come along in a way that you don't like erase like hit go to Google Drive and start like backspacing that shit like bro you can change it like it's you know, it's 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 up to you. Like that's the power is in your hands, Affleck. Exactly, the power it's... is yours. Yeah, I mean, as I Him said back. in like the news flash, <laughs> as I said in the news flash, I think I th- this movie is happening either way. Like DC or WB will make sure it happens. Whether Ben Affleck is the director or not, we don't know. Um, but man, I don't know. I. It, it, it's just kind of distressing to hear him say, like, time after time, and maybe it's just because he's tired of answering questions about it, but it is just distressing to hear him say, like, over and over again, like, oh, you know, if, if you know, if this isn't going the right way, I'm not going to do it. Or, you know, if it's not really coming along, the script isn't where I want it to be, blah, 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 blah. You know, if you're DC, I, I think you've got to be a little concerned that your star is running around saying this, like, literally every opportunity he gets. Yeah, that's like when I asked Simon Kinberg, is Deadpool going to cross over with X-Men? He's like, I don't know, man. He just, like, walked away. <laughs> so you won't be Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, uh, dude. Batman confirmed Deadard? No, uh, I mean... It's going mean, to happen no matter what. It's going to get made. But, the, but yeah, yeah, basically all this is saying is that Ben Affleck just wants to get the best product he can out of it, but it's not clear how much time WB's going to give him to get the movie out since they already announced it. Well, that's the biggest thing to me is there's, I think, and this might be unpopular, and let me know in the comments section down below what you think about this, but I think there's a clear rift developing between Ben Affleck and the heads of DC and WB. Like, And if there's not a rift, there's at the very least a, a very obvious... Um, kind of difference of opinion on, on what should happen with this, whereas DC and WB obviously feel like this should be happening sooner rather than later. Mark Hughes at Forbes is reporting that they're targeting 2018, which would mean they need to get started on it, like, now. Um, you know, they want this out as soon as possible, because they know Batman, coming out of Batman v Superman, is like the one bankable, absolute stone-cold lock of an asset that they have in their, you know, DCEU, um, and he might be the saving grace, uh, Ben Affleck is like, no, I'm not going to make a bad movie. I want to take my time with this. And while that sounds great, like there's 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 good and bad to both sides. Like maybe Ben Affleck is being a little overly cautious, and maybe he's like overthinking it a little bit, and maybe he's playing it a little too safe, and maybe DC and WB are trying to rush out an unfinished product. Um, but there's there's there clearly the a difference. Time. Unfortunately, no. there's no evidence of that thus far, so we have to think <laughs> exactly. of other things there. Exactly. But I mean, this there's clearly a difference of opinion to me, at the very least. What do you guys think? I would say, at the very least, there might be some kind of disconnect. Oh, wow, this seems like a DCEU them. topic video. Is there a disconnect? <laughs> ben Luke, ben take Affleck. notes. No, yeah, one I of the bigger like issues here is that it seems <laughs> like there's just like a huge line between the production like the production staff of the movies and the uh the people at Warner Brothers trying to figure out like what they want to do like Warner Brothers wants to catch up to the MCU everyone else wants to put their mark onto like the comic book films and it's creating a huge rip where they can't find a middle ground they keep losing people and people keep hesitating it was really interesting because that kind of ties in with what happened with Rick Famiwa on Flash. Is reportedly he wanted to add because he's got Ezra Miller, this um, great young actor. Uh, he's got Kiersey Clemens, who previously was in, in Dope. Uh, there were reports that Cyborg was going to be in the movie. Apparently, he wanted to add a lot more modern and current social undercurrents and themes into the movie. And WB was like, "No, 
uh uh-uh. uh. Like, we want this to be a straight up, basically, like, comedy, more or less, uh, from what I've, from what I've been hearing, at the very least. And, uh, you know, it's, it just seems like one of those moments where I think WB, like, if this is the case, WB just needs to get out of the way. They just need to, you know, to let it happen. Or at the very least, somebody at the head, you know, somebody just needs to take the reins, take the lead, and kind of move it's in the right direction. It's not even necessarily getting out of the way. It could, it's basically just that they really need a Kevin uh, Feige, Feige, however you pronounce his last name, to just need someone to be able to tell people... This is the direction we're going up front. This is what you have to do. Can you do this? If not, good day. Exactly. I mean, we've, heard, we've heard all those articles about, outside of uh, Edgar Wright on Ant-Man, like everyone else who's left Marvel Projects has done it before they've started production. Yeah. I mean, and there's something to be said for that. I think the, you know, and even Edgar Wright's Ant-Man, that was, I was deep into pre-production, but it wasn't, you know, they weren't filming yet. Um, yeah. So... It's one of those things where, you know, a lot of things had to happen. That was still very much like a pre-production, like, differences thing. And the DCEU is young. It's not like it's, you know, completely unsalvageable or anything like that, you know. So people, please don't believe that's what I'm saying at all, you know. Um, Oh, they'll believe it. They'll believe it, I'm sure. But it's one of those things where sometimes a committee approach doesn't work. Sometimes you just need one person that's ultimately going to make the decision, like, one way or the other. Um... And but even so, I'm not sure how we got on this topic, but uh, you know, this like don't be too afraid. The Ben Affleck Batman movie will happen. The question is, does it happen? Well, actually, my question for you guys is, does it happen in 2018? Probably. Uh, I think so. I, I feel, feel like it's, it's going to come out in 2018. Like the only, the question that we had here is like if Ben Affleck like cuts off from production, like is. Like, is he going to leave as an actor also, or just as, like, a producer take his name off of that well, outside of the role? See, or is that's he leave all together? That's the really funny thing that a lot of people pointed out to me in the in, in the comments of my video on it yesterday is, it's like, oh, he's just going to leave as a director. It's like, well, if you read the comment, it's like, why would he stay as an actor? Like, why does everybody seem to think that he just wouldn't direct a movie? It's like, it's a Daredevil situation all over again if you're involved in a bad Batman movie. Like, Jesus Christ, your name is forever etched in the annals of history with George Clooney and Val Kilmer. You know? know, Why would you stick... I I read it more as, why would I stick around for something that I know is going to be a subpar those Batman movies were good, though. Schumacher, baby, but no. You know, but I don't know. I mean, to me, it's like... If they're going to do 2018, like, they've kind of got to start filming by April. Because every DC movie is taken, by my estimation, anywhere from, like, 14 to, uh, on average, 16 months, roundabout, to start production, from the start of production to, like, to, from, from farm to table, more or less. Like, they start filming, and 16 months later, it hits theaters. Uh, that's more or less the average production time. So it's like, if you take that into account... Like, we're looking at, like, if they started filming today, they would come out in, in maybe July or August. You know, if they started filming in April, then, hey, we're looking at maybe an October 2018 date, which Aquaman's already taken. If they started in June, well, maybe we're looking at December. You know, but it's one of those things where, either way, they've got to get moving, and they've got to get moving soon. Hmm. Dropping some knowledge. Wow. Dropping some thoughts. Well, on well, that note, I think we should probably move on get out of this movie... Get out of this CJ Get dominated out of this topic pit that we dug. Yes. Yeah. Twenty dislikes yeah. already. Let's see if we can earn some back in the next segment. Yeah. The, well, the next segment is something that I'm interested in and I actually like. So. And which our yeah. most of our viewers probably don't care about, but. Yeah. So Sad. basically, uh, this is the comments. The, well, the comics, uh, I should say, a portion of the news. Basically, so Watchmen is going to be brought back into the DC Rebirth fold and apparently written by Jeff Johns as he's been teasing about it on Twitter and stuff. And I'm guessing this is going to be either an event or just like a mini series that kind of ties into the larger Rebirth story. So pretty cool news to me. Uh, what do you guys think about that? I, uh, I'm still cautious about how they handle this whole merging of the two canons of Watchmen in DC. I trust Jeff Johns as a creative mind behind stuff. He's done probably some really good work with DC, but I mean, I don't know. 
it's still up in the air for me currently. Like the Doctor Manhattan thing, I'm still on the fence about. <laughs> Well, well, if I nothing mean, else, if so, his Justice League series is any indication, he's good at writing series in a bubble, so this may not affect Watchmen all that much outside of the story itself. Oh, damn. But, you know, I I don't know how to feel about this one way or the other yet. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see the Watchmen getting more run. I know Frank Miller is not dead yet, but I, or Alan Moore, excuse me, is not dead yet, <laughs> but I'm sure he's, he's turning over in the coffin he sleeps in. Um, yeah, he's playing Pokemon Go, last we saw him. <laughs> That's true. Alan but, Moore is yelling at some sheep right now. He is, but when he gets when his when his carrier pigeon comes and tells him of this news, I'm sure he'll be none too pleased pigeon, with you young mean Jeffrey. Messenger crow. <laughs> That's true. Um the three eyed raven. Familiar, comes and tells his familiar, his cat that walks his across familiar, the Atlantic. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But I mean it's one of those things where it's I really don't know how to feel. Like I, I'm glad that I'm not sure it'll be the entirety of Watchmen. I think it'll probably just be mostly like Doctor Manhattan and whoever Mister Oz turns out to be. Whether it's Ozymandias, who seems the most likely candidate, um, or somebody else entirely. Um, you know, I love Doctor Manhattan. I think outside of like Nightwing, he's probably one of my favorite, if not you know, right there with Nightwing as my favorite comic book character. Um, he's just such an intriguing intriguing guy and uh you know he's i a big guy. he's a he's a big guy for me um but it, it, well you can be because of that molecular manipulation stuff but it's just it's kind of weird because i've you know you've heard things like it's like oh this makes sense it ties in with the end of watchmen where he goes to create life elsewhere in the universe and then a dc rebirth it's like no somebody just stole 10 years and that's where we're working in is like this 10 years of lost time that everybody forgot it's like, well, what happened? DC is a big fan of arbitrary measurements of time. Well, it's just, uh, yes, but it's like a weird, like, distinction to make. Like, this this ten years, it's like, well, it, like, okay, is this, like, where he went off to go create life? Did he just get bored creating his own life and find this other universe and was like, you know what, I'm gonna fuck with this a little bit. Like, I wanna mess around with I wanna this. Mess... I wanna take away joy. And if that's what it is, I'm gonna be really disappointed. Um, but... You know, it, I think there's. I just want them to do right by him. He's he's a good character. Um, I would I would actually go as far, go so far as to say he's a great character. Um, I just don't want them to fuck him up. That's my that's my big thing. Yeah, uh, Tim. What are your thoughts on the Watchmen? <laughs> Nick goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, I mean, we haven't seen much from it yet. I'm still not sure how I feel about Watchmen being a part of this, who's going to show up in it from the Watchmen. Or uh, even with Jeff Johns, Jeff Johns has always had the problem where even with himself, he's not good at adhering to continuity. He just kind of does whatever he wants to, so it's kind of weird what's going to happen next with it. Tim slinging the bombs. Well, it's, it's honestly true. He's retconned himself in, within, like, t a five-year span. So That's you're true. saying he's played himself. He's gone from Bo to Luke Duke. There's all these weird theories about, like, uh, what characters from the Watchmen are actually in Rebirth right now, but they just don't know it, like the whole Mr. Oz thing. And then uh, there was a weird theory that one of the three Jokers is the comedian, which is like, what? Yeah, that was a <laughs> odd. Yep. But. I wonder. I just wondered if the three jokers thing was some weird time displacement that Doctor Manhattan did. Like, I thought they were going to explain that, but they never addressed the jokers ever. And have they I followed up after, on that at all? They have not. No. Yet. I think Tom King's going to be doing something with it after I Am Bane, but which is really? I'm, I'm, I love base Tom King. So. But yeah. I mean, they might. It might be the the next after I Am Bane. I mean, I I think. Well, that kind of leads me to my next question is, do you think this uh, title Jeff Jones is writing is really like going to be a Watchmen miniseries, or is it just going to be a continuity of the DC Rebirth title um, that explains more of like what it is and what happened? It might just be like a miniseries, like only a few issues that explains like the Watchmen side of things from DC Rebirth. Well, that's what I'm thinking is because what's really funny is like if you remember back in like January... Uh, when the story about DC Rebirth first broke, like that was one of the first things. It's like, oh boy, here comes this reboot, this universal reset for DC Comics, and oh, by the way, Dr. Manhattan's involved. 
It's like that was like one of the first details that came out, and we've been sitting on that news literally for twelve months, just about like waiting to find out like what exactly Doctor Manhattan had to do with it. Um, we yeah, just haven't. It's pretty cool. We haven't been told. So, I think it's pretty cool. No, it's actually agree. like an overarching like thing that hasn't been fully revealed yet. Like we're we're getting the introductions to certain stuff like dealing with rebirth and titans and um i think superman a little bit or the Legion and of superheroes yeah but i mean like the whole idea that like dr manhattan and his involvement like it's hinted at but it's not just something that's outright just solved like that same year i kind of no, like yeah. that dc's yeah. playing the long game with this one and i actually yeah. really as opposed DC to comics another are great but the movies are awful i was about to say as opposed to another publisher that uh pumps out a different event every what six weeks that's true seven i think that's what you know i, I do agree with that i think it's great i kind of like this new format that dc's going going to which is we're going to have this longer overarching plan in the background meanwhile most of our issues most of our actual titles are going to have you know basically like short story arcs they're just going to have short separate story arcs um while we've got this whole bigger plane going on in the background. Um, it's kind of interesting. It tied into another Bleeding Cool article about how most c- titles are doing that. They're doing, like, three or four issue arcs as opposed to you know, these long, like, six issue, you know, arcs, which used to be the norm. Except Wonder mm. Woman. Except Wonder yeah, Woman. Wonder well, Woman, which is, like, 12 fucking... Man, well, wait, Wonder Woman's... You missed the arc review. Wonder Woman's doing two, yeah, two stories at a time, shame. though. I, I, let, let me go back and check how many views that Wonder Woman review got. We really missed a boat on <laughs> yeah, that Yeah, it got one. 1K, dude. You should have done it. Yeah, oh, if it's at 1K, then weeks. we should have done it. But, um... <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Everyone the, loves Wonder Woman. The, just the most exciting thing for me out of this whole Jeff Johns Watchmen thing is just that he's coming back to comics because, like I've said multiple times, like... That's where he belongs. He doesn't belong in the movie stuff because he's just not an executive or anything. He's just like a fanboy. Like I don't. I mean, well, I mean, I, I'm not kind of magically fall in place if he starts meddling with all that stuff. That's true. Well, I mean, I'm just glad I'm holding out hope against hope that his his meddling, as you put it, will actually result in something positive for DC. But um, you know, I, I kind Jeff of agree John with you. John sneaking he's... up behind everyone, rewriting their scripts. <laughs> Daily yeah. on set. He is. He. <laughs> He is one of my favorite, one of my favorite writers. He he's written some of my favorite stuff in comics, and so I I I, I like to see him back there every time. Um, yeah. But it's always nice to see him come back. Oh yeah. yeah hopefully we can meet him at San Diego because he hasn't been to a con in a few times, like the past couple that's cons. Cool. I hope so. I, I'm really hoping we can even make it to San Diego. But that's yeah. That's another story for another <laughs> one time. step that's at a time. The... There, Nick. First well, we I'll have to get well, I mean, there. Nick's definitely going. Nick is yeah, going Nick to be going. there. <laughs> He's gonna I'll give Jeff him. the the Bo Duke action figure that he so sorely is missing. <laughs> Prevent him, present him with that and a box of blueberry. There you go. Oh god, got you, bro. Have Anyways, no fear. all right. Speaking of things happening in to, 2017, <laughs> yeah. Do you want to move on to like talking about the year ahead of us? Uh, that that hopefully will be better than last year's stuff, but. So, I guess we can just sort of talk about. Do you want to get? Do you guys want to talk about shows coming back first, or the movie stuff? Um, I mean, we typically do first. movies first on this podcast. Well, let's do movies first. All right. So, the first live action movie, the DCU stuff, is Wonder Woman, obviously, which comes out in June. Which is actually, I think it's all about five months. It's really it's coming up soon, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm guessing we'll get this uh, trailer two with Kong in like March, which makes sense to me. Right. True, probably. Um, but I don't know. I guess we can just talk about like what our hopes are for this movie. So, Luke, what are your, where are you at currently with this movie? Are you still looking forward to it, or what's? I'll say for Wonder Woman, I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, the trailers. I mean, I've liked what I've seen so far. It's just. I mean, look, I've liked what I've seen so far in the past, and I kind of got a rude awakening, so this is cautious. I'm being cautious about it. I think it looks cool. I'm excited for it, but I think this is probably not going to be a day one viewing. I'm going to have to probably wait and see what some people say before I go take a watch. But mm. No, this is a week three matinee viewing. 
<laughs> this is when your your second run like two dollar theater probably gets gonna it. be a matinee. In all fairness, but Aww. I mean, <laughs> wait, CJ, what are your thoughts on it? I mean, I'm I'm actually a little bit excited. I've I've liked what the trailers have shown me so far, even though that's burned me in the past. Um, you know, I've heard some good things outside of even what what Patty Jenkins and and Gal Gadot were saying on Twitter. Um, Patty Jenkins has showed me she's shown me the receipts. <laughs> uh, but but no, I you know I, I I am excited. I like the setting. I like World War One because I feel like that's really unexplored as a setting. I kind of like the concept and, and, and the, to me, it's just it's got to execute. It's got to do something that I feel like a lot of you know a lot of DCEU movies haven't done so far, and that's just execute a good story. It's just execute All three of them. <laughs> from even though Man of Steel actually did a pretty decent job. Looking back, like what were we thinking? Like. Good God, we complained so much yeah, that about was Man of Steel. Movie. It it really was. It's and it, you know that's not to say like that there was nothing redeeming about BBS and Suicide Squad, but it's like looking back, Man of Steel is still the best one. Um, and we, dude, we bitched. I think we bitched a little too much about Man of Steel. I think it's karma that's come for us. Um, but hopefully, Wonder Woman will will actually. Write the ship for them at least partially before Justice League. Give them a little, little um, old man mo, a little momentum. Um, oh, Justice League will sink them. But I'm excited for it. <laughs> if Tim, so, if Tim Justice League thoughts? doesn't. Oh, I'm, I'm going. I thought CJ was going to continue going. Well, I, I was going to say, I was going to say, if Justice League doesn't work, I think that is it. Um, but that's. That that is like the biggest like bet they have to make. Like, you know, it's like if Avengers didn't work, if that wasn't a hit, like what would have happened to Marvel? But yeah, uh, no, well, b- basically, I've s- I've said this before uh, on the podcast. I haven't been huge on any of the trailers I've seen so far. There's been decent elements of them, but overall, I'm not sold on it. Honestly, I don't really even know what I want out of the movie. To be perfectly fair. I just I just want to like see like the just like a fully solid product come out like not be as jumbled as their last two outings not be as dragging as Man of Steel was just find a middle ground to do what you want to do but be able to present it better. Yeah, they they need this to be their Iron Man one where it's like a perfect origin. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it has to be perfect. I think that might be setting the bar a little too high. I think some people, well, it's including never myself, be will perfect. take. I think some people, including myself, will take a serviceable origin story, which I think they are doing. I think I, I actually really like the choice that they're making, having her be just a straight up golem as opposed to, um, you know, a demigod, which some people will take offense to. But yes, look up what a golem actually is, and you'll find out that Wonder Woman and the Pre New Fifty Two was literally that um, straight up golem. Wait, straight but up said golem. That she is a demigod, though, in the movie. I thought they were saying that she was made out of clay, like she said in the trailer. She was made out of clay. No, oh, they're no, they mix both origins. Well, that's she's actually born of Zeus. They, they made that... her out of clay, and then Hades shoved his dick in it <laughs> <laughs> and it brought her to life. Ironically. Uh, the power of my be. god goo yeah, that's the that's the podcast title for this episode <laughs> god goo Hades shoved his dick in it yeah, <laughs> yeah Hades dead. we gotta we gotta bring back the old funny titles <laughs> that might be like the best like the that might be the best well I'm so not the title that might be like the best way to handle her origin is doing like both you know a combination I, I think that would be but... the first origin where Hades is her father though no, it's it's not. He, she's not going to be the. He's not going to be the father. I guarantee it. But <laughs> well, we'll have to do a test. We'll have to, to ask Maury. <laughs> we'll do DCEU Maury, which I hope involves G Gordon Godfrey. But <laughs> is that like all after, we have on Wonder Woman? Or? After after ex- after the the DNA test revealed that superheroes are bad, and also Hades, you are the father. But <laughs> comic tour <laughs> mistake. There you go. <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah. So next I'll, up uh, next year, what do we have? <laughs> I'll just say really quickly, I didn't say anything I want to but I'll just say that uh, I, I'm i also sort of looking forward to the movie. I think hopefully, well, from what I've seen, the the best thing about the movie to me is that it looks like it won't be like so like uh, 
trying to be connected to the other movies. Like, it looks pretty standalone from what I've seen. Um, but supposedly there's going to be, like, a Bruce Wayne cameo at the end or something, but whatever, I guess. Um, I, I don't know. As long as the the story itself is good, I'll be happy, but, you know. True. I just want to... I want to be entertained, and I don't want to have to sit through... I. I would like it if I could see a superhero movie that wasn't a commercial for something else. That is my biggest hope for Wonder Woman, but I don't know. True. Hmm. But at the so same that, that time, buy us... Wonder Woman hats and mugs today. Yeah. <laughs> that leads us to the next film that's coming out from Zack Snyder called Justice League. That's in November, which is yeah about ten yeah. months out. So mm-hmm. uh, we... We have yet to get the official trailer for it, which I'm guessing will be out probably around springish. Maybe even with Wonder Woman, actually, they'll drop it. Uh, that would make the most sense, I think. That does but make I the most sense. I feel like I, we'll get I one feel before it's then. Come before but... that point. Yeah. I mean, there, yeah. It's this honestly feels a little bit like um, I don't want to say it feels like BVS, uh, dun dun dun, but it, it feels a little bit like BVS and like the trailer release schedule where they're like shit. We released something maybe a little too early, um, so we're foregoing like trailer release etiquette, and we're going to release something at odd times. Because usually you don't see a first trailer for a movie until like six months out. It's like Spider-Man: Homecoming. We finally got the first trailer about six months out. You know, Alien Covenant. We finally get the first trailer five months out. But how much of that is because like the movie has been moved up like three months, which is unheard of in Hollywood. Yeah, uh, that, you know, yeah, the marketing team for Alien is probably like, fuck, why'd you move it? <laughs> exactly, it's like, this would have been it. perfect. Uh, but no, I mean, it's one of those things where I feel like they kind of are almost beholden to release a new trailer because they did an SDCC one, and that was like a year and a half out of their damn movie. And now it's like, shit, it's been like six months without a trailer, we kind of feel like we have to release one. Well, uh, technically, that So was I like wouldn't a be shocked at all if thing. they release... Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked at all if they release something in the next month or two. Um, kind of like BVS did, like, the... What was it? It was, like, their first trailer was released, like, an actual, like, year out from the movie. Um, but, I mean, part of that was because, it's like, oh, shit, our movie's been in development for 24 months now. Uh, <laughs> like, what do we do? I remember... Oh, my God, I remember, like, where I was when they announced that it was going to be a Batman versus Superman movie. Like, I remember exactly where I was. Um... But you know, it's it, and it was definitely not really focused on this YouTube thing. Um, so that can tell you how long ago it was. But we've yeah. come a long way. We, I've, so, I've become CJ, a lot what are your focused. thoughts on Justice League? <laughs> it better be good. Um, that's kind of my my ultimate thought. Is it kind of has to be? It kind of has to be a good movie. Like it's 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 something that I honestly hadn't considered before. I said it earlier. It's like. It's like, what would have happened to Marvel if Avengers flopped? You know, I think we have to be kind of considering at least the possibility it's like, what will happen to DC if Justice League is not at least positively received by audiences? Like, if critics give it, like, mixed reviews, like, that's one thing. But if audiences don't like it, kind of like they didn't like, uh, at least Suicide Squad, I feel like, was one of those that um, people didn't, you know, maybe Batman v Superman to an extent. Um, You know, it's... That's the one thing I don't think the DC accounted for, um, you know. And I, it'll be interesting to see if they took it into into consideration this time. Like this, this kind of has to be based on, you know, maybe if like BVS had been better reviewed and if Suicide Squad had been better reviewed going into this movie, they'd have a little bit more of like a, uh, you know, a grace period, some wiggle room. Um, but they really don't. Like they, the heat is on. Like if this doesn't work, like I think this is when like. You know, heads start rolling. To be quite honest, um, but I don't know. That's just my opinion. <laughs> Tell and according to, a- uh, go ahead. But I go guess ahead. my thoughts on this is, uh, would, I don't. Uh, again, I don't really know what Justice League has to be at this point. It, it has to connect with audiences, but I don't know exactly what that is at this point because most of DC's reception from the audiences has been mixed at best so, so they didn't have they didn't have the good faith going in that marvel did to the avengers and the avengers 
is a fun movie, but it's kind of a shallow film, but that's fine, because that's all people wanted from it. With DC, because of the previous, like, reputation that they have, it's not clear what Justice League has to be to get that same reaction from people. Yeah, and plus, uh, a lot of people had complained about uh, BVS, mostly, that it was, like, too joyless or something, so now... If they, it seems like they're going, like, trying to make it more of a, cr a crowd pleaser with Justice League, so that might, if they go too far, people might get upset now, or something, yeah. like, it's too tonally different, I guess. Yeah. But even then, like, Justice League might have to be, like, an objectively stronger movie than the Avengers to get the same reception Avengers did, because most of Marvel's stuff, like, even the stuff people don't like now, it's mostly from hindsight. At the time, I mean, yeah. most people just thought things were meh or generally liked them. Yeah, no, I mean, looking back on Avengers, like, rewatching, I can tell you, it's like, a lot of people say Avengers is their favorite Marvel movie ever. And I am definitely not one of those people, because honestly, like, even at the time, like, Avengers was good. Like, it was, but it, part of, like, the magic of it was, it's like, oh my god, this is the first time we've ever seen something like this on screen. It's a superhero team-up movie. It's... It's like the Avengers. Holy shit. It's this big, massive superhero team finally on screen. But looking back on it, it's not the best movie. It really just isn't. Uh, you know, it's it really kind of has a major plot hole that should be like... Like, it should have like been like, holy shit, this should like be a movie killer. Um, but it wasn't, because it's like so much of the movie is charming and whatnot, but... Yeah, it's not you know, it's, a strong movie, but it was what it needed to be at the time. A lot of people are like, oh, Avengers is like my favorite Marvel movie. Avengers isn't even in my top three Marvel movies. It, it's it's like barely in the top five, which as I say, you know, as you can probably tell, it's number five. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of those... It's Justice League, I feel like... Because Avengers has already been done, Justice League can't just be charming. It can't just. It doesn't get the benefit of holy shit. This is the first time we've seen the Justice League on screen. Even though it'll yeah. get yeah. that. The it, novelty it can't is just be DC's Avengers. It has to be something no. else. It has to be at least. But a it has to be film. in a similar vein. That's why it has it's to confusing. What it has to be. Like to be. I don't think it has to be as good as the Dark Knight. Yeah, it just I don't has know to about be. That. It just has yeah. to be a. It has, it has to, to be, be like a comic book film 2.0. <laughs> It has to be I think a decent it just has movie. to be enjoyable to an extent. So here's yeah. here's and people people AAV club. I'm gonna ruin any good faith I had with you um, after like the last podcast that I was on. You were the only one that didn't suck ass. The only one that didn't suck ass. The reason why BVS <laughs> wasn't a good movie is because BVS did something. Um, well, it didn't do something really. BVS. I understand. Like, there's something artistic about it. Zack Snyder aimed for the stars. He put in a lot of allegories. The issue is he put in a lot of allegories to a movie from the 80s that nobody's ever seen. Um, and part of the issue is allegory only goes so far when the movie isn't a good movie to begin with. It's like you can say that BVS is cerebral and people don't get it because they don't get the allegories, they don't get the depth, they don't get the metaphor. It's like, yes, that's true, but if the movie isn't enjoyable, if the movie doesn't make sense, if the movie doesn't flow then none of that really matters. It's like at least you know, Avengers went from one point to the other. It was a movie, plain and simple, even though it was basically shallow, and it had a huge fucking plot hole. It's like BVS is just... It's vapid. It's soulless. It's allegory for the sake of being allegory, and I'm never going to be yeah. on this podcast again because I'm going to get destroyed. I love I'm the final fight destroyed. scene that just had tons of crosses in the background. Exactly. I mean, I just, just a shit ton of like, crosses in, like, every shot. Well, that's just, like, essentially my biggest problem with this thing has been so far is just that BVS, like, I can appreciate what it wanted to be, but I just feel like the th the, the steps taken to try to make it that just ended up being this really empty, bland, like, really boring movie that is trying to say something, but the movie itself isn't interesting or, you know, really... Exactly, but even still, people are going to come... ...for me to care... People are going to come at me in the comments and say I'm a hater, but really, I didn't hate BVS. I didn't want to hate Batman v Superman. I really didn't. I really went into it wanting to enjoy it. I know Nick, more than anybody else that I know, went into the movie wanting to like it. A part and of it Nick wasn't, died that day. A part of yeah, Nick I loved, did die that day. I loved day. it. It brought the soul back to superheroes. 
Batman v Superman was like it was one of Nick's horcruxes, and one of the horcruxes are gone. Like it's like that was a part. <laughs> Nick is weaker now because we're the one movie step was not closer good. To Nick killing is him. weaker because of it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm I'm honestly done talking about the movie. But it's one of those things where it's like I didn't go into the movie wanting to hate it, and I still don't hate it. It's just there are obvious flaws with it, you know. And Justice League can learn from the mistakes of Batman v Superman. It can learn to be a better movie and it's like not everything has to reference Excalibur for whatever reason uh, you know not everything has to be a Christ allegory like good god so CJ like, what you're saying to to... is double the amount of crosses yes I want to watch this movie so many times I don't have to go to church <laughs> um, Wait, they'll learn from BVS not to try and set up a whole universe in one movie Exa- hopefully it could be um, a thing yeah so, but, Luke, what do you want from Justice League? I just, wanted, <laughs> I just want to watch Justice League and be like, yeah, that makes sense. This I can is... understand this plot. This is fine. God damn I'm it, not, you want it to just, get I'm dumbed not... down and be boring? Okay, Luke, I, don't, Luke, I don't appreciate Luke, Luke, that argument from a lot of people. The Luke, whole thing, uh, you want it to be Marvelized, you want it to be dumbed down. I don't care Luke, if how you dare have you? fucking crosses in the background. I don't care Dude, if you you're can't, super... If you there's can't just... write essays about it, though. Luke, yes, Luke, you can write Luke, stories about it. Luke, how dare can you, you really not... Luke, kill him you, or is that yourself. Just... Luke, I don't how... care about a god versus man complex if your characters are so unlikable. I don't Does give a god shit. god versus man, day versus night, man. Luke, god damn it. <laughs> da- 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 like, da- how can anyone take the thing seriously when Lex Luthor is like the fucking worst overreact? I don't care. Luke, I god just damn want it. Justice Dude, Lex good. Luthor was great. He was like an allegory for like millennials or something. Oh my Luke, I, I Luke. want Justice League to be good. That's all I want. I just want Luke to sit Justice down. League I want to allegories. enjoy it. I want to sit there and I be don't like, like being yeah, talked good. over. I Luke, appreciated that. God damn it. Luke, holy shit. <laughs> you I'm ruined it. I'm from the future to tell you. I'm from 2018 to tell you. How could you not appreciate that Justice League was an allegory for Ocean's Eleven? Good God. Like, you're just disrespecting the entire thing right now. I just want to watch a movie and not just say, wow, that seems like it was hastily put together with barely any thought. Why do you want to watch a movie and not Kino? (laughs) You, You know what will be Kino? Alien Covenant. I'll watch that. This has been the pick on loop cast. Sad. Can yeah. we get to the viewer questions so I can actually? Yeah. Let's get out of this. Let's, Let's just get do out of viewer this questions. When we're quick, done, right. Hades will shove his dick in it. There you go. Hades, so, shove your dick in us. Right. Twenty sixteen. Viewer questions, guys. We made it finally. So, <laughs> first one, Jalen. Do you think a Superman Telltale style game would work, where your choices affect how the city looks at you, being like MOS soups or Superman from the comics, while juggling to be Clark Kent? <laughs> Jalen is a man after my own heart. Oh, God. The problem um, with Telltale Games is that it's diamond-shaped storytelling, so your choices essentially don't matter that much. In the end, they That's don't. That's true. Yeah. I will say, they did a really good job with Batman, so I'd appreciate a Superman. Yeah, he, yeah. Luke reviewed that, so you can go check that out. Well, I don't, I don't yeah, want... Please. Yeah, go check out that Luke guy. It was actually really good um, for Luke being told three days before the final chapter came out that he was going to review it. Um, yeah. But I... I honestly don't want a Superman tells all game because I want a Superman game that's a little more open world. And part of that is because we haven't had a, a really good Superman game yet, in my opinion. And I don't think a Telltale game is really what I want. Um, because I feel like that would be decent enough to kill off interest in making a better one. Uh, maybe I'm thinking about that the wrong way. but So uh, you're saying you want a Telltale Suicide Squad game? With fancy hats, please. <laughs> But yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Tim, what are your thoughts? Oh, you said your thoughts. All right. Yep. So, <laughs> right, kind of. Uh, I'd be okay with it. It's not ideal, and I'd want other franchises to be touched before Batman or Superman, just since they've had so many chances in the past. I mean, I think you could easily. It, like, Superman is one of those. Like, and I love Jalen, but Superman is one of those characters where I don't feel like he really fits the Telltale formula very well at all. Um, you know, I feel like somebody maybe more like Batman actually does fit the formula very well. Yeah. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy is going to be interesting to see how they pull off, but um, you know, you know, someone like the Question could be a great Telltale series. You know, I don't uh, think no Superman is about the Question. True, but I don't think that. Superman Watchmen could be a great Telltale series. I don't feel like uh, you know, I don't feel like Superman would be a really, really great 
Telltale series. Um, but damn, but DC about, superhero um, girls. That's where the money yeah, is. That would be Dude, great. Would be I great. actually would want that. That'd be fun. That'd be money. That would be fun. I would like a little brawler team up little thing for superhero girls. Yeah, I thing. love DC superhero girls. It's one like of my favorite Double Dragon. new shows and comics. I do, I do like the show. It's fu- it's fun. Yeah. So that I like that one pick of Killer Frost. Nick keeps putting in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love DC superhero girls. Wink. Can Wink. I get free stuff. <laughs> Send me a shirt. Yeah. I feel like at this point DC's never going to give us any free stuff. No. So Not next question: you mean with this glowing uh, podcast we've done so far. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ne- no, next question is from a new user. This is a this is a virgin question right here. I like it. Uh, this one we have not answered before. Cherry. Yeah, this guy Classy Lissies. My question is: Do you think the Justice League trailer will debut on the CW special, which were rumored for this year? And which DC Rebirth comic is one of your favorites so far? Thank you. Have a great, happy day and New Year's. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank um, you, Classy. Unfortunately, that's two questions and we can't answer this. <laughs> that was very classy, <laughs> Ulysses. Yeah. Yes, we can. We can definitely answer this for you. But um, I will. I'll say that I'm not sure if they're going to do a special this year. I'm, if they would, if they were going to, I think they would have announced it a couple weeks ago. But you never know. And yeah. To answer your second question, what's your what, which one of the DC comics is your? Uh, I would probably say, honestly, for me, either Detective Comics or The Flash. Both of them are really good so far. I um I kind of agree with Nick in the fact that I think if there was going to be a CW special, they probably would have announced it. And the only reason why I say that is because uh, I said this in a previous uh, Super Friends episode, but looking back on like the when the H and N's first started, when I first started that as a show. Um, it was actually like around this time last year. It was actually the late December 20, 2015. And one of the first stories we covered on the H&N's was the CW special. Uh, and it had just been announced and it was going to come out. I feel like they would have announced it by now. They still could announce a new CW special. I don't see why they wouldn't. I think the opportunity is there. But I feel like the time is kind of running out. Um, which DC Rebirth comic is my favorite so far, though, uh, that's got to be Nightwing. Base God, Tim Seeley. Almost, I mean, as much as I love Tom King and his Batman run, I think he's still kind of coming into his own. He's still kind of finding his own footing outside of uh, Scott Snyder. And he's got he's got his work come out like, cut out for him. Uh, but I think, you know, Tim Seeley has just taken what was great about Grayson and translated it into Nightwing, uh, which I really appreciate. Now that they're back in Bloodhaven, it's even better, so... Uh, that's that's my answer. Tim, what are your what's your answer? Uh, yeah, I kind of feel the same way about the about the special, though I no, I'm not gonna dismiss it possibly happening. I can still see it. Ha- I can still see them doing it with what they have. Uh, as as for uh, my favorite Rebirth comic, it's either Green Arrow or one of the Titans books. Mm. Those are that's solid choices. Uh, Lurk, what are your thoughts? Same for the crossover. Well, same for the rebirth thing. No, the, ah, <laughs> same for the special the crossover. You confused what's him with funny is, What's funny is, what's funny is, Luke was not drinking tonight, but me and Nick were. Now you guys know this is just how I am sober. Um, <laughs> and I'll just say flat out, Superman is my favorite rebirth book. Agreed. That's a good one. Hmm. All right. Now, uh, next question is from Aiden. He says, "What do you guys want in the Man of Steel and Suicide Squad sequels?" God damn, that's like an hour-long discussion or something. Right there. <laughs> that's a short. Oh question. boy, I, mean, uh, I can do a answer. short one for it. For let's Man of let's Steel, stream on it. Just... What's what's? <laughs> okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now I'll go. Go ahead. Uh, so for Man of Steel, uh, I just basically want more life in it. I want more characterization, just more interactions, getting to know these people more than just there to exposit about what's going on and how important it is. And True. for Suicide yeah. Squad, the characterization's there. They just need structure. True. I mean. My my computer chose the wrong time to fuck up. Uh, I was gonna say let's streamline it to one thing, you know, each. But Tim kind of was reading my mind again and knew what I wanted. I'll uh, 
I'll say Man of Steel, I want Superman, kind of what Tim said, I want Superman to have more life. I do wish the Supergirl thing was real, because I think it would be kind of cool to see Superman have to teach someone else how to be a hero. I think that he would need to develop more as a character before that happens, but whatever. And Suicide Squad, I don't think there should be a sequel, because I really am not a fan of that movie. I don't think it should get another chance, so, you know, there you go. I mean, I, uh... For a Man of Steel sequel, I really would want... I kind of I like what Luke said with... Um, I like what both Luke and Tim said. Uh, I, I would like to see Supergirl. I'd really love to see Brainiac. Uh, that's in some way she perform in uh, this DCE. Just because I feel like there's a lot to be learned there. There's a lot to be developed with the character, uh, you know, kind of in relation to that villain. And I, I kind of like what Luke was um, kind of getting at, where, you know, maybe Superman can learn something by having to teach someone else how to be a hero. Uh, for Suicide Squad, I don't know, man. I really don't. I, I, uh, I. Uh, how about David Ayer's actual vision? Let's uh, let's go with that for my. But the thing in theaters was his actual vision. I'm sure. Oh, I'm Why sure. Why would he lie? Oh, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, no. I, I would love to see what David Ayer actually had planned for that movie before studio involvement. Hmm. Just everyone ended their sentences with "fuck Marvel." There you go. Basically, Thanks it's for... just everyone is. This is Katana. Her soul traps, or her sword traps the souls of people she kills. No, her soul I would traps have... the swords. <laughs> her soul no traps the swords. This is Katana. I'm done. She's got my back. Her sword traps the souls of the people she kills. Oh I would advise not being killed by her. <laughs> Fuck Marvel. Please. <laughs> Dude, I think Nick, how about you? What do you want from these? For for Man of Steel two, I want Superman to murder more people, and then no. for Suicide Squad two, just put King Shark in there. It'll be better. Damn, I don't want I a full CGI character. It would distract too much from the actual movie. And not Harley Quinn saying, "You made one mistake, Puddin." You messed with my family, despite the fact that she did nothing but shit on these people for two hours. Just keep in mind, David Ayer didn't use King Shark, because he didn't want a full CGI character. And yet but we got Scorpion we got, King. We got Scorpion <laughs> King, and, and hula hooping motherfucking chick yes, from the and grudge. And skeleton warriors. So, motherfucking next question. ring chick, hula hooping. So, next question, so Magma go. Ascending. If Jeff Jones were to direct a DCEU film, what, who would it be for and what story would he adapt? I um, wouldn't want him to direct because he's not a director. Yeah, he wouldn't direct yeah, exactly. anything. If he directed a movie, I'm going to say Green Lantern. Who would it be for? Green Lantern. And what story <laughs> would he adapt? His own Green Lantern run. Yep. Yeah. Josh Josh is actually sitting here and gave me a look of approval on that one. Take that <laughs> as you will. You got the boss right, approval move, on that right, one. We got a, next question. Or... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a good one. What if Brett Ratner directed a Tim Drake Red Robin movie? Can I actually? Can I? Here's what we're gonna do for this one. Can I get Josh's opinion on this, Josh? Wait, no, because Josh will do take ten. Josh, come yeah, No, I'm gonna, gonna hold Josh. Josh, you have one sentence for this. What if Brett Ratner directed a Tim Drake Red Robin movie? Thirty seconds or less. Go. Ah, <laughs> uh, no comment. Oh, there we go. No comment from All Josh. right, there we go. There's your answer. <laughs> All right. I, I Why worry? It, it, it might it might be fine. Rush Hour was fun. Red Dragon was pretty solid and I don't really dislike Last Stand that much. Can Dude, I tell you La- that Waru's... X-Men Last Stand was a better Civil War than Civil War. Shut up. Can I tell you that Waru's second question actually <laughs> I like it a lot more than his first one. Dude, his what well, Waru's next question, what are your hopes and fears for DC? We already answered that the whole time. No no no, no 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 You you missed the first part of his question. Oh. Ask Marvel what? it. <laughs> <laughs> Waru, oh, you're slipping, come on. God damn well, it. No, now that's gotta be on Marvel. We gotta answer that night. Yeah, they answered that on Marvel. That was <laughs> on in our Marvel. comment section. Waru. I just copied it over. You did this to yourself, Waru. Waru Played will yourself. answer your question. So you'll on have the to tune episode. in tomorrow to hear the answer to that, Waru. 
That's true. Yeah. I hope he would be anyways, but Yeah, yeah. what uh, who who sponsored this episode before we close out? I forgot. This uh, this episode was sponsored by Loot Crate. Uh thank you uh so much oh, for reminding me, Nick. Uh Loot Crate of course is this amazing subscription service. You get this exclusive box of cool, unique goodies every single month, including a t shirt that you won't find anywhere else. It's only found in the in those loot crate boxes. Uh, and you can get 10% off any subscription. All this cool stuff, even cheaper, just by using our exclusive link, www.hybridnetworkyt.com uh, is our <laughs> website. Uh, www.trylootcrate.com slash hybridnetwork is their website. We'll, of course, be linking to them on our website as well. And then the promo code BRIDGE10. Once you're there, uh, you'll get all that great stuff even cheaper. It is really late. Yeah. And I have been imbibing. Is yeah, what's here. So that was Super Friends episode sixty three, guys. Uh, thank you all for your comments and obviously thanks your questions. For, and uh, thanks for a great twenty sixteen. Uh, yeah, hopefully great. you stick yeah. with us for twenty seventeen and don't shit on us too much. Let's hope twenty seventeen is better. <laughs> Fingers crossed. That's Fingers what we're all hoping. We're probably not. One week oh, we'll have a non bad DCU story. It's like after Wonder Woman. It's like, huh? That was pretty good. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. That'll be it. No, That'll after Wonder it. Woman, you'll be like, God damn it. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, yep. It's just so, in David Bowie's come back to life. Oh, well. 2017. Oh, well. Yep. That was episode 63. Again, leave your comments and your questions for next episode, and we will catch you guys then.